Hi everybody, Matt Yakovet, Head of Open Source Strategy here at Percona. I'm here to walk you through how to create a custom dashboard uh, within Grafana, uh, pulling data out of ClickHouse uh, into uh, a Grafana dashboard, querying the QAN, Query Analytics, or the PMM uh, metrics for um, Percona Monitoring and Management. If you're not familiar with Percona Monitoring and Management, it is a database tool that allows you to um, monitor and manage your databases. And so in this case, I'm going to create a dashboard that collects queries per second and allows you to select the server um, or the database that you want to see the queries per second for. And so in order to do this, um, we're in uh, the Grafana dashboard here. Um, I've already gone ahead and I have clicked on, you can click on the um, manage dashboard or you can click on the create dashboard, either one, but we're going to create a new dashboard. And so if you're not familiar with ClickHouse, ClickHouse is an analytics database. It enables you to store um, large quantities of data and analyze them quickly. And so here we're going to query ClickHouse, which is, if you've already installed PMM, will already be included. Um, you can see you get this handy dandy kind of uh, query here, uh, but it's got this red button up here and it says, oh my God, default undefined doesn't exist. So in order to fix this, we click this little pencil button, click the pencil button, and we have to select the database we want to query, which is PMM, and then we have to select the table that we're looking at, which is metrics. So in this case, you'll see two columns, and this is how the data is stored. The data is stored in a column uh, setup, and we're going to uh, have the ability to store either the or query things by a date and time or a timestamp. Um, the date and time is what we want. The timestamp only has the period length um, in it, but this is, um, you can get the period start data, and so we want to get that, uh, that information there. Now, in order to figure out what we actually want to query here, well, before we do that, let's go ahead and let's go back to this, um, and we're going to hit apply. Oops, sorry. So we save that. Um, let's go ahead and name this queries uh, database queries per second. Okay. And um, now the data populated when I did that. Basically, what this is doing is this is showing how often there is data, data counts from each iteration during that time frame. So that's not what we want. What we need to do is we need to get the query counts that are part of that. So if we come back to our browser, I have this blog that our CEO wrote about a year ago on using uh, ClickHouse. This is when we moved our back end to ClickHouse. And so in order to get advanced query uh, data, he put together this, this kind of guide where he walks you through how to uh, get data out of ClickHouse. He gives you all the columns. He outlines, you know, what's in them. But he also tells you how to access Click ClickHouse directly in case you wanted to go to the command line and query this data. But I'm not going to go to the command line. I'm going to do it all through Grafana and show you how to do that. So the critical thing we want to do is we want to get the number of queries. And so if you take a look at all these metrics, there is a number of queries. Um, so each bucket, how many queries are in that? So we're going to replace the count. So instead of just counting the iterations, how many data points we have, we're going to sum the number of queries. And because we want it per second, this is right now stored in minute. So we're going to do divided by 60 um, as QPS. And so if we go ahead and apply that now, OK. Um, hold on, let me go back in here. We should be able to do a query inspect, refresh. So we just refresh the data and look at this. You can see now the queries per second from within Grafana or from within ClickHouse in Grafana. Now this is where I was actually running some benchmarks and some tests. So I can drill in here and I could see how many queries per second I got every minute on average, which is kind of cool, which is what you want to see, what we're expecting. Now, in order to filter this, because right now this is for all systems aggregated. So 
we've got um, you know several different systems. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how other dashboards have implemented this. All right, so we're going to go over into Quan, for instance, um, and we can say, oh, let's save this dashboard. We'll call this Matt's. Okay, now if we go back into either PMM dashboards or query analytics, any of these doesn't really matter. If we click this gear button, we'll go into the settings and we can see that you can make this editable. Um, we're not going to save this, but we're just going to go look at the variables. Okay, so in the variables, if we go back here, you can see they've got all these different options that we have to the side. Um, you can also see that if you go to PMM dashboard, let's discard that real quick and we'll show you this one as well. You can see up here, you've got the nodes, you've got the environments, you've got different metrics here as well. So either place you want to go, if you click this dashboard, you can look at the variables and you can get the service name. And the service name is what we're most interested in. But in this case, I want to use the service name from Quan. Um, because I don't want to filter it based on other things. I want to just get the raw data. So I want basically local host, uh, local domain Postgres. That's my local host Postgres. My MySQL server or my PMM server in the case of this. Those are the ones we want and we want them in a drop down. So let's go ahead and take a look at how they've defined that. So here we've got service name called service name. It's a variable. Um, you can hide the variable, hide the label, or do none. Okay, so this defines how um, things show up. So if you choose label, uh, then the drop down only displays uh, the variable name in a drop down area. Uh, but if you select none, then it will do the name and the label of the value both. Uh, so it's kind of up to you. Um, if you hide the variable, then nothing shows up and you'll get really confused. Uh, so just be mindful of that. The one thing that you need to be made aware of is you have this refresh and then you also have the query itself, okay, which is here. And this is the variable you're looking. So you're looking at label values and you're doing uh, the service name and up. So let's just copy that. We'll just make this super easy. We're going to discard that. I don't need to save that. Now we're going to go back to my dashboard that I just created. Matt's query test. <coughs> here we go again. And we're going to create that variable. So here we have no variables. We're going to add one. And so we're going to call this service name. Look at that. It pops right up. And let's call it server. Um, we're not going to hide anything. Uh, refresh on dashboard reload. And the metric here is going to be this. Now we want it to be multi-value and you can select all of them if you want. And you can see here this preview of values. It shows you what options are going to show up in your dropdown. Let's click update. Okay. Now if we save the dashboard and we come back to looking at this, look, we have this dropdown. Now unfortunately the dropdown doesn't actually do anything yet because we haven't hooked it up. Now we need to go ahead and we need to edit our query again because it doesn't know about the service name. And so we need to put an and service name equals dollar sign service name. So basically the variable we just created. Now let's go ahead and hit apply. Now we should be able to remove certain metrics. See, now we've selected just the MySQL metrics. I'm doing very few queries, if any. I can just do the PMM, same thing, and I can do the Postgres as well. So there's my metrics that I ran. We have now created a mini custom dashboard using just the Grafana interface um, to connect to ClickHouse. Um, and so that's a quick one-on-one. We can add other metrics here. If we wanted to dive deeper, we can add just the database. We can add, um, you know, other other things. We can also, because we've got that time interval here, we can change the time interval to be 
24 hours if we want, and it will automatically just scale back and forth. There you have it.